Okay, you would remove the trim ring from the tube and, as, and when you remove it, you'll notice that there's an X on the inside. The two X's need to face each other. And this is because the uh, trim ring isn't symmetrical. It won't work backwards. So the two X's facing each other, uh, that's the way it, it would be assembled. So to use this trim ring to mark the inside of the trough, you would take and have that X exposed to the inside of the trough. So it's facing inside and towards the trough. Sit it down flat on the bottom and basically just center it from side to side and then raise it up so it's just off of the round, the radius at the bottom of the tank. Once you have it centered and all of that radius, just mark this hole and this hole, the two top corner holes, and uh, drill them. Once you drill them, you can put two bolts in them holes. They'll hold the trim ring. Now when you put the trim ring on the outside, the same goes. You've got to have the X facing the fate towards the center or the inside of the trough. And you would just hang the trim ring on the two bolts that you just drilled with the X towards the inside of the tank. You can go ahead and mark the rest of the holes and the cutout radius for the tube. And then uh, the holes through the fiberglass would be bored 5 16 The bolts are quarter inch, but boring a 5 16 hole allows easy entry of the tube. Okay, to insert the tube, you'd go ahead and uh, you'd place it inside of the trough and then you'll notice that the, uh, the bolts, the quarter inch bolts, are threaded through the aluminum ring so you don't have to worry about inserting all of them when you're putting the tube in. You sit the tube down in, it's got, a feet, it's got feet at the bottom, you just let them sit flat on the bottom of the trough, just raise it up a little bit and get the bolt hole started and just work your way right on around. And basically the trim ring on the, that's welded to the tube will go up flush and then you can insert the other trim ring on the outside keeping in mind that you got to have the X towards the other ring. And then you'd use flat washers, lock washers, and nuts and you'd tighten this right on up. After that's tightened then you can come here with a with a drill with a quarter inch drill bit and you would drill right on through that ring on the flange of the aluminum right on through the bottom of the trough and the same thing on this side you do the same thing there's only two holes on this front edge and they'd be quarter inch once you've got them bored you go ahead and you can insert a bolt with a flat washer on it from underneath sticking up through that plan and then you can insert a flat washer, a lock washer and a nut on this side put them on there finger tight, get both of them started and then once you've got both of them you can go ahead and tighten them down and that's all it is to putting the tube into the trough okay after the tube is assembled into the trough then you go ahead and insert the uh, the propeller shaft the easiest way to get that in is to spray a little bit of WD-40 on the end of the shaft and on the bearing which is inside here you can spray it from either side just a teeny bit of WD-40 on it it just makes it easier for it to slide up on the rubber because it's a water cutlass bearing you'd insert the impeller shaft being careful not to bend the blades on the impeller because it's already mounted. Basically just line it up with that sleeve which it's loose to start with so you can pivot it up and down. You get it started and just slide it on through and just slightly rotate it as you slide it through. You get it in there so far and then you can pick it up from here. You can slide it the rest of the way. Once you get it inside, 
there's a mark that's on the shaft that is actually 13 inches from the face of the impeller to this mark. This is where you would install the shaft zinc. And it takes a uh, small standard Allen wrench to loosen the nuts up on it. And it splits in half and you'd put it over top, right on that mark over top of the X. And then tighten it back out. And then you, you tighten both sides till you get it totally tight because it's got to make good contact with the shaft to, to be effective. Okay, once the zinc is tight, you want to go ahead and pick up on the impeller, being careful of the blades. Slide the uh, impeller shaft back to the face of the bearing and then rotate the impeller shaft so that one of the blades is sticking straight down and then you can just go ahead and lower the uh, impeller shaft. That way the other two blades are supporting the impeller shaft while we're installing the trough. After the uh, trough is installed back into the upweller, you would refasten the tank to the sides of the upweller frame. Then you would install the upweller pump motor brackets and uh, basically it's a support it's bolted to the wooden frame of the upwell of the uh, flopsy to support the plate that holds the gearbox and motor. And the way that is installed, the back edge of this angle support is just supposed to be in line with the inside edge of the tank. So you would put it to the edge so that the end of the support is in line with the inside edge of the tank. And then you would go ahead and bore the three quarter inch bolt holes and install the bolts and bolt this in solid to this side and then you would do the same thing on the other side putting that support so that the back edge of the support is in line with the inside edge of the trough the same way and then go ahead and bore your three quarter inch holes and bolt that one up solid too. When putting the impeller shaft into the coupling on the gear it takes two people, one person to hold the motor to be able to turn it and pivot it while the other person picks up and inserts the shaft into the coupling. Then tightening all the bolts evenly on the coupling. And you, you do have to tighten the ones that are on the gear as well as the shaft end. Because when it, when it arrives they're not tight, it's just slipped on there. So you basically go back and you, you tighten them evenly across and just keep tightening them back and forth till you get them fully tight. Okay, once you have the shaft lined up with the, with the gearbox and everything tight, all four uh, locking bolts on the sides and the three locking bolts at the bottom, then uh, you're ready to tighten up the water cutlass bearing mount that's in the tube and hold the hex on one side and tighten the lock on the other. The, there's one that lets the bearing block pivot up and down and then there's two bolts that let the, the bearing block pivot sideways. And you would tighten both of them up too. Once you get both of them locked all three of the bolts locked up, you're done with uh, the burn block. Then uh, you need to insert the screen that we provide to keep debris from getting in the, getting hung on the propeller. And basically it's two pieces of screen that's cut and then there's holes bored in the edge of the tube around here that you can lace a tie strap through and through the screen to hold the screen in place. Go ahead and insert the, co the cover over the top of the uh, motor and it's easily or easier done with two people but basically just sit straight down over top of the unit on that lip and then insert 
five bolts across the back of it quarter inch bolts with uh, flat washers and then the other side flat washer lock washer and a nut through it and four on the front okay once the guard is uh, bolted down solid you can take and uh, bring the power cable that's coming from the motor and you just insert it up underneath of the control panel pull it on up gets plugged into the bottom of the control box the screw will be facing down and basically you just line the plug with the socket you just line it up it's a pin and sleeve slide it just wiggle it a little bit as you slide it in and then the clip snaps down which holds it in place okay basically uh, when you plug the unit in uh, it's not on and you should have a red light that's showing that you got power to the unit and basically you've got a speed pot where you can speed it up or slow it down and you've got a start button that you push when you push it it'll turn green the red light goes out then you can control the speed by the speed pot wide open or, or real slow to stop it you just push the stop button